Today, I wanna to talk to you guys about Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus, the bread of life. I remember reading, I think it's in John chapter six, verse 35, Jesus himself declared, I am the bread of life. If anyone believe in me, they will never be hungry. Jesus declared to him, to everyone, that he is the bread of life. You say, well, Dr. Sure, what does that word bread mean? Well, the word bread in the physical means food. And everybody that's alive needs food. But not only that, we need bread. We need bread. We need spiritual bread. Not only we need physical food every day, we need spiritual food. Because if you don't feed your spiritual man, like I always say, you are a spiritual being having a human experience. You'll get that later. Then guess what? You can be spiritually malnourished and you will let the enemy beat you up in your home, beat you up in your relationships, beat you up in your marriage, beat you up in your job and beat you up in your own mind. You can be a prisoner of your own mind. It's like WWE going on all the time in your mind. But when you focus on Jesus and his word, he is the bread of life. He is the only one that's going to satisfy. And I just remember um, in, the, in the Bible back in the Old Testament when the children of Israel was wandering in the wilderness. They were wandering in the wilderness and they were hungry. And guess what happened? God had manna to rain down. Manna, that means what is this? Manna was the Angel's food cake. <laughs> manna was angel's bread. And manna was God's bread. And did you know in that time when the children was wandering in the wilderness, hungry, do you know Jesus spiritually came and fed them? I'm repeat that. When the children of Israel were wandering in the wilderness and they were hungry, Jesus himself came in a form of manna. Because Jesus himself said that I am the bread of life and fed them. So no matter where you are in your wilderness, you could be in a wilderness in your marriage, a wilderness in your finances, a wilderness in your health, depend on Jesus to feed you daily. And check this out. Every day, Jesus gave them a fresh loaf of himself. I'm gonna repeat that. Every day, Jesus gave them a fresh loaf of himself. Because if they tried to keep it and they tried to save it, guess what? The next day it would turn into worms. It wouldn't work. That's why the Bible says God's grace and mercy is new for us every single morning. Come on, Holy Spirit with this. See, you can't live God's grace that you had yesterday for today. It won't work. It's going to spoil, Evelyn. That's why you have to get up and you have to receive God's grace grace and mercy every day. That's why you have to receive his, what they call daily bread. I'm going somewhere with this. So not only that, when Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights, guess what the enemy tempted him with? Hunger and not just spiritual hunger. It was physical hunger. Jesus was physically hungry. And do you know what the enemy said? He said, turn this stone if you are the son of man turn this stone what into a loaf of bread so first of all the enemy is going to come at you with a question if you say you're a christian why aren't you healed if you say you are a christian why are you going through this turmoil in your marriage if you say you're this christian why are children asking acting crazy he's always going to put those these three things in your mind fear doubt and unbelief. I'm going to repeat that. He's going to put these three things in your mind, just like he did Jesus, called fear, doubt, and unbelief. And you know what Jesus did? Jesus could have easily turned that stone to bread, but he said, it is written that we should live off the bread of God, his word. Jesus could have turned that stone to bread instantly, but he was not going to be tempted by the enemy. A lot of times we get stressed out and frustrated. We want to take matters in our own hands. Don't do it. Don't do it. Trust God and believe in Jesus and his word and his finished work. 
Because the truth of the matter is, come on, Holy Spirit, Jesus actually was the stone and the bread. Ooh, come on now. Jesus was the stone and the bread. You want me to prove it? Jesus said, I am the chief, what? Cornerstone. And I'm the bread of life. Jesus was not this or that. Jesus was this and that. Man, we have, man, let me tell you, we have so much treasures found in Jesus that we don't even discover them all. We don't even, I'm just, I'm just giving you the tip of the iceberg, beloved. Jesus is our bread of life. And we have to eat of him daily. So do you know when you take communion, you know what you're doing? When you break that bread, guess what you're doing? You're breaking the bread of life. You're breaking Jesus's body as if it's yours. And guess what? You get all the benefits. You get the benefits of health. You get the benefits of healing. You get the benefits of prosperity. You get the benefits of God's word. Every time you take communion and you break that bread, guess what you're doing? You are getting the benefits of what Jesus has done for us. Therefore, I'm going somewhere with this. I know today in the month of January, everybody's going on this fast and crave, Daniel fast, Elijah fast, all this other kind of stuff, man. But God gave me a revelation of that. And this is something I used to do as well. So I'm not knocking anybody for fast. If that's what you feel like you got to do to get God's hand to move, I pray that you get a revelation of that. So Jesus was, account, was encountered by the followers of John and even the Pharisees. And they asked Jesus, they said, Jesus, why don't you and your disciples fast? They asked Jesus that. That means Jesus and his disciples were not fasting. And I think that's in Mark chapter 9, I think it is. Go and check it out. Jesus was questioned about fasting. And you know what Jesus said? Who in the world would fast or take in their belt when they are with the bridegroom? And you got to think about this. They knew about a wedding. It's like, have you ever been to a wedding? Have you ever been to in a wedding? What do they have? They have cakes. They have cookies. They have desserts. They have all kinds. They have a buffet. Now, who in the world would fast when all that is going on? No, that's a time to celebrate. So Jesus himself says that who in the world would fast when they were the bridegroom? They were the bread of life. Nobody. Because he was breaking down their religious walls. He was breaking down their religious traditions. And as long as we are with Jesus, and Jesus is not only up in heaven, he's inside of you and me. Through the Holy Spirit, Jesus is inside of you and me right now. In fact, I'm going to say this, and you may not like it. You can't get any closer to Jesus than you already are as a believer. I'm going to repeat that. You can't get any closer to Jesus than you already are as a believer. I don't care how much you fast. I don't care how much you tithe. I don't, I don't care how much you pray. Jesus said in, the Bible says, in that day you shall know. And Jesus said this too, I am in the Father. They are in me and we are all one. We are in a seamless union with one another. Man, you and I are in Christ Jesus right now at the right hand of the Father in heavenly places. That's where our spiritual a body is right now. So why are you going through all these religious hoops to get to what God has already promised you in Jesus Christ? Because everything you do, trying to get God to move on your, half, on your behalf right now on the other side of the cross is what I call dead works. Oh my goodness, I'm in somebody's religious tree right now. I'm shaking it. Holy Spirit, help me to shake it. Help me to shake it like I used to shake them palm trees from my grandmother's backyard. Everything you do right now to try to get God's hand to move, try to get God to intervene in your life, man, right now is a dead work. That's right. I, I go on record saying that. It's because right now, man, Jesus has finished the work for us. We just have to believe what he did and speak it as it was so. That's our life as a believer. We have to believe it and speak it and stand on the word. You say, Dr. Short, well, I don't know how to stand on the word. Well, Doc, going to get your big Bible out and you stand on it with your two feet. So, Dr. Short, I can't stand on my two feet. Well, stand on it with one feet, doggone it. 
You have to stand on the word of God because when Jesus said it's finished on the cross, man, he wasn't lying. When he said it's finished, it was finished. There's nothing else you can do to add to the grace of God. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I know this is going to mess y'all religion up, but there's nothing you can do to add to Jesus finished work. And even the disciples of John, when they questioned Jesus about fasting, he even went further. He said, who would pour new wine and old wine skins? If he, if you did, guess what? You're going to lose both. You're going to lose the wine skins. You're going to lose the new wine. Jesus also said, who will sow a new patch on an old garment? Because when you wash it, it's going to pull away and it's going to rip and it's going to tear it up. Only new wine can be poured in the new wine skins. And Jesus came us to give us the new wine. And I'm trying to give you the new wine. I'm trying to help you to let go of old traditions, old mindsets. And I know the people of old has taught us the best that they knew. But Jesus came to me to tell you he wants to give you new wine, but he's got to put it in new wine skins. That means you have to have a new mentality. New wine only could go in the new wine skins. I mean, I can't wait to release this new book in 2024. It's going to shake up religion like nobody's business. People may call me a heretic. People may say, oh, man, he just like Jesus. He came around and started trouble. You know, Jesus started trouble because he did not fit into the Jewish religious tradition. Jesus did more stuff on the Sabbath than the religious people ever did. <laughs> Jesus healed on a Sabbath. Jesus did, oh my goodness, Jesus did so much stuff on the Sabbath that they were offended by him. Let me ask you this. Do you have the courage to speak the truth in love and don't worry about offending people? Because if you do, man, God is going to keep breaking open the new line for you. That's right, Emily. He's, this is good trouble. Jesus got into good trouble. That's right. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Are you willing to get into good? Man, I'm willing to get in good trouble in 2024. I don't care what kind of situation it is. If, if it's the truth, I'm going to speak the truth in love. And God has given me a revelation, man. You're going to hear it from me. You're going to hear it. That's why I don't believe in fasting anymore. Jesus has finished the work. What are you doing to improve on Jesus? What can you do? to approve on what Jesus did. I'm gonna ask you right now, what can you do to improve on what Jesus did? There's nothing else you can do. You can't make God love you anymore or any less based on what you do. And if you try to do that in God's economy, it's called dead works. It's called dead works. We want living works. And the way we get living works is to trust the bread of life. Trust Jesus in his finished work. Man, Jesus has already lined up all our blessings for us. They're already lined up for us. We just have to trust him enough to believe it. And guess what? He leads us a roadmap on how to get it. You know where it is? It's in his word. It's spending time in the word of God. It's spending time in prayer. It's spending time with just developing a relationship with him. It's spending time with listening to people that's going to challenge your beliefs. you got to listen to, to people who are seasoned in the word of God that's going to challenge your beliefs. Oh my goodness, man. Say it with me. I'm going to trust Jesus no matter what. Say it one more time. I'm going to trust Jesus no matter what. I know that Jesus is the bread of life. Therefore, I don't have to starve myself to get God to move. I don't have to you, you know, uh, uh, take stuff away. For God to add to me, I don't have to do that. And if that's where you are in your spiritual journey, God bless you. But God has called me to tell other people, you can go higher. You can go higher. You can go higher. Jesus, the bread of life. Jesus, the bread of life, man. Once we eat of the bread of life daily, man, we won't be hungry for junk. I'm going to repeat that. If we eat the bread of life, Jesus, every day, we won't be hungry for junk. 
See, the only thing the enemy want to feed us is junk food. Sin, doubt, unbelief. That's junk food. But Jesus came to give us the bread of life. Jesus came to give us life more abundantly. Jesus came to give us a taste of heaven on earth. How many of you guys want a taste of heaven on earth? I do. How many of you guys want your family to experience a taste of heaven on earth? I do. How many of you guys want your friends, your close friends, to taste heaven on earth? I do. Well, you have to speak this word, stand on this word, and believe this word, and trust Jesus like my Aunt Evelyn says, no matter what. If you got something from this message, click like, share.